What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode right here. This is this is a very privileged episode that I have today. I got my mother right here, who is one of the biggest inspirations in my life right here, who's been uh, part of the DNA that has allowed me to get further in life, especially with uh, the business aspects and everything, everything that I know to the best of my abilities, I got a credit to you. So today we're gonna kind of cover my, my mother's accomplishments. Uh, she, she's. I'll, I'll let her accomplishments speak for her because I couldn't. I couldn't word them to the best of my ability if I had to. But they're they're definitely amazing, and I hope you guys will stay tuned to hear her full story. But mom, you want to give yourself a quick little introduction after that? I know that's a heavy introduction, <laughs> but you want to introduce yourself one yeah, time? Yeah, uh, quick study too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. I get yeah. it from you. <laughs> get all my get these it's good really, genes from you. Oh, you're yeah. so sweet. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. No doubt show today. No doubt. Thank you. I'm a little girl from Grand Island, Nebraska, who grew up in the 50s and the 60s, graduated from high school with a class of 370 students. Wow. And um, I realized that Nebraska didn't have any opportunity for me. So when I was um, 19, I married my way out of the state and moved to Denver, Colorado. Wow. And um, I was lucky enough to um, get hired by United Airlines at an early age. I couldn't uh, apply to be a flight attendant, which is what I wanted to be, right. because I was only 20. Right. And at the time, you couldn't be married and be a flight attendant, and you had to be 21 years old really? to serve liquor. You couldn't be married. No. Also, they kind of wanted you to be able to be flirtatious they and be able. They wanted the flight attendants to be coffee, tea, or me, unlike, you know, that was the right. image they had, but they right. wanted the purity of like, young women right. serving, being their airline hostesses. Right. So that was back in the day when <clears throat> United Airlines uh, was really just growing and expanding. Right and people could really not afford to travel very much. At the time, travel was also new to people, and so the attraction of being with an airline and being able myself, coming from a small town, to experience the way the rest of the world lives. Right, what's huge. Yes, and talking, seeing other cultures and talking to other people in my job in right. reservations and in sales. Gotcha. Now, um, help give me a polish that I would have never had. Really? So that just stayed in Grand Island? Right. Yeah. So your mother was from Nebraska, though, right? Iowa. Iowa. My mother is from. So she came from Iowa and then she transitioned to Nebraska, right? Yes. Right. And when she was about seven years old, her family moved to Nebraska. And she had a big family, too, right? Yes, she was the oldest of six. She was the oldest of six. And what did she do again? Um, and she. Um, was a housekeeper for the wealthy families in town. Gotcha. So she was scrubbing floors and washing gotcha. walls. She was a very hard working. Hard worker. Because she was widowed at 38. Wow, with how many kids? <laughs> she had the six of us, wow. ranging from 17 to me at a year and a half. Wow, that's, some, so, that's um, something to be said right there for that. <clears throat> she she um, got public assistance for a while, and then she started her own cleaning business. Because again, at that time, women didn't have a lot of options for work. Right. And domestic work was something, or kitchen, cafe, or. Right. They women. It was like. It was like. Different. Yeah. Gotcha. They didn't have the opportunity to do so many. Like they have now. Jobs. So versatile. You had right. a few different industries that mainly was the woman's Don't place. Gotcha. 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 So. Once again, you got a pretty big family. You got a lot of brothers. You got a lot of sisters. But you're the baby of the family, though, right? Right. They say the best to last. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd be in agreement with that for sure. I'm kind of biased, but nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless. But um, the opportunity at United in the early '70s was not promoting men. I'm sorry. They were promoting men, men. but not women. And not women. And right. so the uh, Equal Opportunity Commission came in and gave United a big fine and required that they start promoting right. minorities and women. Gotcha. And uh, so I was in the first wave 
uh, they're hiring up women as first level managers. Gotcha. And there was an office of 400 women out on 38th and Quebec. Gotcha. And there were 400 women and there were no women in management. Wow. <laughs> None. No. I was one of the first four women really? promoted in United Airlines reservations. That's amazing. As a first level supervisor. Isn't that something to be said for? That's a, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's a milestone right there. So within that time frame, you you watch the world evolve into what it is now nowadays. Because what we're going to get on is definitely technology based right here. But you've been able through your experience through United and so forth like that. You've watched the world evolve from basically not having women in power structures to having women in power structures to having no no readily available technology all the way to what we have now beyond demand technology. Well, what would you say though your experience at working for United was like though? Would you say it was a wholesome? Because you spent what, 27 years with United, right? 27 years. 27? Two different um ages of employment. Now that's what you're talking about though, didn't you? Because you had an issue with, with them paying you what your correct salary was compared to the men that were doing the same things for you and you took them to court for that, right? Right, but to backtrack a little bit, um, it was with United Airlines when they were just starting to automate the reservation system gotcha. that I was a, a, an instructor. So I was in on the very early beginnings of automating the travel industry. Gotcha. And we went through a couple of different systems like with Unisys, which was the, the IBM of the day. Okay. And Spiri Rand system before using an Eastern Airlines system as the basis for what's known now as the Apollo Reservation okay. System. But Back in the day when I started, we wrote handwritten rest guards, and when when my time for my uh, 15 minutes of fame came, it was actually because of the experience of the automating the travel industry, recognizing that when you're traveling, you need to be connected to the internet, gotcha. is where I saw a need and we tried to fill it with CyberFly or public gotcha. internet access gotcha. kiosks. Gotcha. So it, I evolved, I was just the point of trying right. to make, and it's hard to remember when you didn't have internet access at your fingertips right. and broadband at that. Right. But um, basically I put in my time with United Airlines and learned everything I could right. from the experiences that I had and then I was able to go out on my own with some other women who were very smart uh, in the travel industry as well. And we formed a consulting group. And one of my very first clients as a consultant was with uh, US West Telephone Company and Antoine Topa was my first client. And so he founded Trip.com, gotcha. um, which U.S. West was invested in. Gotcha. And so through working with Antoine on his startup, Trip.com, I would learn from him as well. Huh? And win -win. it was timely because he showed us how to market our product. Right through the experience of marking another online so from travel one win, company. From one win, you piggyback, you piggyback down that win right there, yeah. Right. So it was a blessing to have that experience, yeah. It was one of the very first online travel sites right. after uh, Expedia. When we started CyberFlyer, there was still dial-up in everybody's right. house. Right. And when you traveled, it was a real pain in the butt. Yeah, for the laptops, because you had to pull out the, the cord. The well, you couldn't find data ports very right. often. You had to use your hotel room, though, right? You'd have and to go so there. when you got in the hotel room, yeah. you had to move the bed away from the oh, wall yeah. to get to the, the Could jack. you guys imagine that if you, when you're going to the airport or somewhere that you want to use your laptop, that you can't just pull it out and just sit in your bed and let it connect to the Wi-Fi, that you actually got to move the bed 
pull the landline, the cord, all the way up and then plug it in. And then you have to dial in. And then once you would dial in, it would take about 40 seconds to connect because it'd be like. What did it sound like? like <laughs> He's looking at me. We got some dogs down here. You guys can't see them, but. Yeah, nonetheless, yeah, but yeah, it was quite a, it was quite a process to get right, online. Right. So like. when we did CyberFlyer, it was very difficult because we targeted airports, right? And because <coughs> that's where travelers were, right? And um, <coughs> where they wanted it was really in the place where they're having a beer, or right. a hamburger en route, right? While they're waiting for the next flight. Next flight, yeah. And so we got a very good deal with. Um, Host Marriott. It started out as a 30 uh, machine test in some of the hand selected cities. Right. But that went well, and we actually signed a contract for a thousand machines. Wow, that's huge. <coughs> yeah, that's huge. And um, we also started out in Norfolk, Virginia, right. and they were really our very first client. We learned a lot while we were. In Norfolk. The New York Times article yes, right here. we made it to the uh, New York Times travel section uh, multiple times. Yeah. We got really good publicity all along the way because cyber cafes, that term was new. Right. You know, basically public internet access is a term that we coined. I think that's something. <laughs> That's something to be said for. Public internet access was coined by you. Isn't that yeah. a, that's a lot to be said for that right there. You know, I think a lot of people just take that for granted nowadays. It's a given, right? It's just a, I think you probably, probably take it for the same like reason. It's like here, it's yeah, like breathing. It's just there, yeah. there, especially yeah. with everything on our phones. Right. But uh, again, to backtrack, my very first experience with technology was as a 17-year-old working for Bell, Northwestern Bell Telephone Company. Really? That's when you had to dial the, the phone without the, yeah. Right, and the new technology oh. that we tested, I was the first one to sell the service. I think that's something. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was for t uh, touch tone dials. Wow. And so when they wrote it up in the newspaper, they said that this new touch tone service would be terrific because it would save time from the rotary dial right. having oh. to return oh. every number. Yeah, yeah. That was the selling right. feature. Right. right, that's huge though. I mean, that's a big transformation right there, isn't it? That's like going from, you know, that's like drinking beer to going to wine almost. <laughs> like, wow, you went yeah, from... Well, it wasn't that long before yeah. that they had operators. Wow, that's crazy. The rotary dial was Can you guys it. imagine that? I don't know if, if we probably got some young viewers on here that probably can't even relate to what rotary is. And it's, if you don't know what rotary is, we highly recommend you go to Google and look that up ASAP. Get a couple of that. That's and kind of... We were smart to hire a really good marketing company that was accustomed at the time to selling technology. The issue was that women in technology was an oxymoron at the time. And um, so we had trouble finding funding. Yes, what you're showing there is our installation in Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah, right there. But these were fashioned after you said after the old school phone booths that were already there, yes, right? Yes, on those. Usually had um, pay phones attached to them, but it allowed you people to sit and, gotcha. and to work while they're there. And what we did is we took out the phone and we put in a flat screen TV right. and made it uh, exterior so that it was consumer proof. <laughs> right. So they couldn't put pizza slices into the credit card right. machine. <laughs> That's what it took. It took credit cards and it didn't take, it didn't take quarters yeah. or cash, did it? No. It it credit cards only. It was 33 cents a minute. Okay. And it was, uh, of course, all networked to the um, backbone of fiber that we put in. Right. So that was like 128K or something like Huge that. Huge so, yeah, fast compared with dial up. Right, right, yeah. right. Because they did, they, that was for like institutions back then. They had broadband back then. It was just for like no, colleges. No, you had fiber. Oh, T1 servers and T3s. That's right. right. Exactly. Those, yeah, those big servers. Yeah, and so correct. we had to hardwire gotcha. those long concourses. Gotcha. So we were a really Costly expensive. Costly install. Uh, right. But we were given credit for pioneering the market. Right, right, right.
morning because we got to market sooner. We were the first to market. Well, it was an investment, we had a though. business model. We fashioned off of the pay phones at gotcha. 33 cents a minute. Gotcha. But that business model didn't work. No? No. Uh -uh. We, we ended up having to do to attract a number of users is um, a survey based model gotcha. where we would give you would give us the answers to two questions for our advertising sponsors okay. in exchange for five minutes of usage. Free. Oh, interesting. And so it flipped. It went from a paid model to a sponsorship model. Interesting. But what we did is we ended up selling our company to a European conglomerate. And this you sold. The reason you sold it, though, was to be able to finance the contracts that right. we had. Right. Well, we were basically just winging it. When right. We got the port of the but you had here. funding already for the prototypes. But you guys. And we bootstrapped everything. Bootstrapped every last single dollar. Yeah. How much do you think that? Like just rough estimate, not not precise. At that time, uh, we were telling investors that. Um, I think it was close to four hundred thousand dollars that we had put in Putting ourselves. Putting together four hundred thousand dollars investment. And the majority was mine. Right, gotcha. As president and the yeah. heaviest shareholder. I think we did touch on that. You were the president of Cyberfly. My yeah. apologies, I'm not touching on that. But, well, yeah. I was just co-founder. Yeah, co-founder, president. Gotcha, right. gotcha, gotcha. So four hundred thousand is is a is a huge investment to follow in on an idea. So I know that must have been some trying times. You know, well, we sold it to the conglomerate. It was a performance-based contract, right. and so we had certain hurdles we had to achieve right. before they got it. Before they solidified it, gotcha. <laughs> right, and one of the hurdles that gave us the biggest return of the million dollars, and, and so they gave us 300000 up front to pay creditors, okay. and the other 700 we had to do um, additional contracts and we had to deploy a thousand machines. Gotcha. But we had the contract for a thousand machines. Already so, lined up, yeah, ready to go, roll out. Us. It was just a matter of doing All right. it. And as it turned out, we were out lawyered mm. because there was nothing in the contract that required it Damn. to net to put the money into machines, the machines for a wow. thousand Wow, isn't that locations. a kicker? Isn't that a kicker? So we had no Funny. Remedy, really? No, and so, so there was no, there was no outsourcing that. There was no reaching out. There was no. There had to, mm. They waited us out until our one-year contracts, wow. contracts expired. Wow. wow. And then they put in twenty-five million. Wow. And expanded it, and Tammy stayed with them to the very end. Right. And uh, Pam and I did, of course. Right. But. Um, at the point that they put 20, it to net had put 25 million into the company, they sold it to another telecommunications company. And so they said goodbye to us. They said goodbye to you. So that's you all, and you're all your team right there, right? You said, Tammy Schreiner stayed out. How did she get it? How did she get the option to stay? And you didn't get the option to stay. She knew where the money was. So what did she do? She 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 worked there. She had an option to stay. Yes, they she. They reached out to her and said, "Hey, we'll keep you, but the others." It made her president of the company. It made her president of Cyberflyer. No, back Under. then it was Gitanet. So now it's Gitanet. They made her president of Gitanet. Interesting. Okay. Got you. I follow. You guys have nothing now, right? And so, do you want to talk about that time a little bit? Like it was devastating, as you really? can imagine. Right. Um, and again, money. I've gotten into debt so much for us. Right. But I had to uh, figure out how to make a living. Right. Right. And, and um, what was the next move from there? What was that? You need to do. I just reinvented myself and decided what else can I do, and I went through. Uh, Easy Conference, which was kind of fun. Right. I was the first one for the Rockies Venture Club. Okay. And, and we actually used the internet to do an audio of the guest speaker that they had. And Streamed it. Yeah, streamed one of the first. Real time, that's like a real time stream. the conference. Yeah, wow. And you expect that. Yeah, now that's a given, yeah. Any conference is gonna be recorded in the theater, right. or national right. video, audio, yeah, yeah. Right. But gotcha. it wasn't. Right. <laughs> I mean, Skype wasn't even around right. at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was a, 
another issue of not having enough money right. to move it forward. And that's where that died out at too, is right exactly. there, stalled out there. Huh? Like, you, do you feel like it all happened the way it should have happened? Or you Absolutely. Feel, yeah, right. yeah. And I think as you get older and more mature, you look back and you see that you're the director of your own life. Right, right. And your mind controls exactly um, what you attract. Right, right. And so I'm very abundant. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. So are you. Yeah. And, um, Everything, even the worst things at the time that I could think of, you know, there were things that hurt the most. In retrospect, turned out to be lessons. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? <laughs> yeah. And I look back and say, if that didn't happen, I couldn't have handled yeah. that. Right, right. And so, had thank come you in for place. the negatives and the positives right. in my time. Yeah, amen to that. Do you think there is, like, any, like, one or two lessons that you may have learned you know, that whole process of... As far as business dealings with friends, I've learned that you want to, or with anybody, <laughs> you want to um, get it in writing right. from the perspective that you're going to be divorced. <laughs> right. So you know that if yeah. anything happens... Yeah, happening, which, which it will at some you point You have time. that defined you up will. front, yeah. be it a prenup with right. as the relationship right. Are right. in, in a business dealing. Yeah. Um, I would highly agree. Because agree. you go, entrepreneurs go on a faith yeah, and friendship. optimism yeah. right. and rose colored glasses right. and uh, think everything's going to turn out the way you expect it. Right. But life has a way of throwing yeah, <laughs> curves yeah. that Which you could I know have all never too well. conceived right. of. Right. Right. And so if you protect yourself that way. Yeah. Plan for the worst and be pleasantly surprised that doesn't happen. Something better happens. I think a lot of people don't want to have that conversation with one another, and you know, they, they, you want to be optimistic and positive, yeah. and especially if you're starting a new business, you're yeah. energized and excited. But lo and behold, you get down that road, you know, you're gonna butt heads at some point. You're not gonna agree, and if there is a falling out, you know, you don't want to have the whole business falling out. So. I can definitely see where you're coming from with that through my experience as well. Definitely highly do. But, Mom, I do thank you for your time today, and I thank you for sharing that and, and being receptive to making this video right here because I think your story is very powerful, and, I, you know, the accomplishments that you've made, I think, are milestones. And, you know, I feel proud to call you my mother, and, you know, these accomplishments right here, I wish they would have turned out a little bit better, but seeing that you have no regrets for them, you know, makes me feel a lot better because I know the potential in the, the, that you have and the... You know, everything you've given me, even down to the fact of the imagination and knowing that, you know, you can make something out of nothing, you know, with an idea, you know, it's been, it's been priceless for me. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, you've always been my wife for life, every, you know, for moving forward in life and, and, and making something of myself. You are my wife. So, you know, I thank you for getting through all the trials and the tribulations. And, and I know you scratch your arms and, you know, cut up your legs and the process but you know I, I thank you for all that I thank you for going through all of that right there and, and, and finding a way to another day when I know there was a lot of days that told you that you didn't want to get to another day I thank you for finding them because I wouldn't be who I am without you so I thank you again is there anything you want to leave on any note anything I just notes? love you lots too love you too mom well thank you guys for watching this if you guys uh, found it informational please uh, leave in the comment section your takeaway from the video right here. We greatly appreciate it. And make sure you guys hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And we'll catch up with you. If you like this video right here, please show some love and hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe and notification button to stay updated for the latest videos. New videos will be dropping Thursday 9 p.m. Mountain Time. So please stay tuned.